everybody. Happy first day of Labor Day weekend uh, and also decent weather. I won't say that it's quite cool enough. Um, we have been having triple digit weather just to make all of the weekends unproductive and miserable and you're just trying not to die of heat stroke um, for the past, gosh, I almost feel like it's been a month. Um, this weekend, it's lovely. It's low 90s. And the only downfall is that we still have insane humidity. So I'm soaking wet and I haven't really even been doing that much. Uh, if you can imagine, it's just been raining all week. So all of that water is just starting to evaporate, make everything uh, super soggy. Um, so I am still taking it a little bit easier, but I feel like a new woman with all this weather. So I'm really excited to finally start getting some things done. It was getting very depressing actually. Uh, so I am in the back bedroom and this is the one that has the funky floor. Uh, so this actually is the flooring that was here. It's a linoleum sheet. As much as it's a little obnoxious, it's kind of cool. Um, this is what was here when my mom lived here and they actually kept plants here in the winter. So this is kind of like their upstairs greenhouse. Even to this day, we really care a lot about plants and um, so we have greenhouses at mom and dad's house and I get to haul everything in and out now. Um, so it is kind of funny that it's kind of full circle, but anyways, if I do pull this up, it will damage it and ruin it. So I'm still debating what to do here. Underneath there should actually be a very nice uh, wood floor. It seems to be in pretty decent shape, if not really good shape. So that's something for the future that's honestly cosmetic. We can deal, I'll just buy some rugs for right now to, to get over it, because there would be rugs in this room anyway. So uh, anyway, so what I'm doing in this bedroom is I'm preparing it to actually move in. Um, as we convert the electricity over, I think you know we've cut most of the power to the house. I'm currently working off of, I thought, two outlets, but it turns out these two are working, I just discovered. So always important to test your, your outlets one more time before you start um, tearing into them because <laughs> that was quite the discovery this morning. So that's good and bad. Um, I will actually be, we need to rewire these. So, and they're actually in pretty decent locations. So I kind of just wanna deal with where they are and leave them alone instead of putting more holes in the wall, um, which means probably what we'll do is wait and pull all the wire for them and at that point we'll take these outlets down but i'm actually really glad to have another location for some light uh, because it's kind of getting to the point here and the reason why i'm videoing now is once it gets dark it's dark <laughs> and and that's that's pretty much you know how we are living right now so um i think i'm just gonna hang off on that just a little bit um, the other reason why I'm working in this particular room is that underneath me is the back porch. And if you'll recall, the ceiling to the back porch is currently ripped off. So we can actually access the underside of this floor extremely well. Um, I can actually get right up into, this is a nice wall cavity to be able to run power. We'll probably run everything um, up that wall and into the attic anyways. Uh, so that's really actually a nice layout. Uh, the downside is going to be that as we wire this room up and I move into it, it's not going to be terribly energy efficient, so it won't be um, the final outcome essentially because um, I can't seal everything up and I don't have all of the insulation installed. So there will be insulation installed on the underside of this, but we're not there yet. Um, for one year, it won't be the end of the world because frankly, it'll be an improvement over what it's been. So it'll be fine, um, but just know that this is not gonna be the, the final outcome. Uh, everything's a process and I signed on to do this for the rest of my life, so here we are. Um, so some of the things that I'm working on, just really marking where outlets go and what's gonna happen. So for instance, you need to have a switch as you walk into a door. Um, so here is a switch for that. It's actually in a pretty decent location. I'm putting all of my switches 48 inches or lower. Uh, and the reason for that is that that is um, the ADA uh, requirement uh, for a reach in a wheelchair. Um, that way it just makes it easier for anybody to be able to reach. It's a nice height that kind of we've all studied and um, I'm trying to also make things consistent because it's really irritating to walk through this house and see things at different levels. <laughs> um, I think they'd be on the same page, but 
Anyways, um, other things we'll do is give this thing a box because that's not going to work. <laughs> so this, this will have an official box. There's a stud in there. It's actually running about right here and we'll attach to that so nothing's going to wobble around. Nothing will be disconnected um, and that will be good. Uh, the next thing is you kind of want to have an outlet within six feet of the door. Um, and so we're going to actually do that on this opposite wall to meet that requirement. And you can't even see it right now, but here is where that is located. If you can see that. Um, so I've actually put these turned out so handy so uh, already. Um, I've actually labeled on the wall where those go. Um, we're omitting other ones and I've labeled that as well. Uh, and hopefully I'll be able to kind of just put a plug in to cover that up. The reason why I scooted it down uh, is that I would assume there would be some sort of a piece of furniture right here. My plan is actually a chest of drawers and so it, it will be oak, it'll match you know the other furnishings in this room. Um, so having the outlet close to that piece of furniture just makes a whole lot more sense instead of right out in the middle. But it does need to be within six feet of the door so we should be good there. Um, I just have the emotional issue of having to cut a hole into my walls. <laughs> So I'm working on that, but in all honesty, this one I can't wire from below like the other ones that I showed you. Um, it will have to come up from or come down from the attic, and I don't think we're there yet. I'm going to save the attic stuff for when it's cold, <laughs> and then we'll go up there and we'll do a whole bunch of work like um, the ceiling fan and, and all of that kind of stuff. Um, okay, so there will be another outlet added over here because we need to do that. Temporarily, this is where my off office is going to be. I work from home, in case you didn't know, before the pandemic. I've done that for about a decade now. And uh, so I always have kind of like an intense computer set up with monitors and all that kind of stuff. So I'm actually looking forward to having this beautiful sunshine. Not the Christmas tree, please ignore that. Uh, but <laughs> having the sunshine and a beautiful window uh, out onto my backyard, um, you know, for a while. So this will be nice. Eventually... Um, we will put everything in the official office, which is just across the hall. Uh, so these outlets will stay, but again, we'll just have to rewire them with the new modern electricity. And then this here was the discovery when we did the demolition uh, that this was a door, and that did make sense. Uh, my mom and my cousin have also mentioned that there was some sort of a walkthrough, um, kind of like a breezeway. There were windows. Uh, that were open to the exterior and then there was another room just on the other side of this wall uh, That was a different bedroom, but they were all kind of connected with this little hallway uh, So I'm excited to bring that back. I think that'll be neat bring some more light into the room um, make some neat circulation and for me personally <laughs> I am going to selfishly make this next bedroom my dressing room because I don't need that many bedrooms um, It will be designed in a way that it can be converted back to a bedroom for the next family member that gets the house. But for me, why not? Uh, so uh, anyway, so this will be opened back up. It's really neat. You can actually see, uh, if you see those white lines, that's actually where the trim used to be. So I at least have some sort of a, kind of a code to work off of, which is nice. So we'll be putting an outlet in here, uh, just out of convenience. And that'll probably be the one that we use for vacuuming and that sort of thing. And then another switch goes here. So if, if you're thinking about it, that makes it a three-way switch. So um, the electrician has actually been up here and he's labeled, you know, fan and lights. And obviously all of that's gonna come up from the attic and nobody's gonna have fun up there <laughs> doing that. But the good news is we only have to do that once. So um, that's good. So this will be a three-way switch, which means I can turn everything on and off here and I can do it over there. Um, the other interesting thing is that this is gonna be a smart home. So this will be able to function from uh, my bed if I'm working on my phone. I can tell my phone to do it or I could ask Alexa, Google, whoever, uh, whatever platform I choose to go with. Uh, this home will probably be Z-Wave. That's what we've already set up. There are two different types of um, kind of software that everybody works with. Um, and Z-Wave is what's working on mine right now. So anyway, so that's the plan there. And I don't think that'll be too terribly difficult. But again, all the wall wiring on this wall has to come from the ceiling anyway, or from the attic anyways. Um, so I don't have to stress about that too much. 
today. Uh, and then I also want to say that these outlets will be uh, measure to start 18 inches or higher. So they're a minimum of 18 inches from the floor. And the reason for that is similar to the ones on the wall um, with light switches. Uh, that's also an ADA recommendation. Um, it also just makes life easier. You don't have to bend down as much to plug things in and out, which prevents people from yanking on cords. Um, that's not good for your electrical device or the outlet. <laughs> so that should help. Um, also, it helps with cord management as well. So, you know, like all these cords laying on the floor. So that's the plan. Uh, I think that'll be really nice, especially if you're just, you know, vacuuming or something. This is what that outlet would be for. Uh, this outlet will go away because the closet's going to go away, so you don't need any lights there. This door is actually going away. Uh, we're going to put it back the wall that was there. I'm going to steal this door and take it downstairs. So I'm super excited to have that. Um, and then that brings me to the one that I've been challenged with. Um, I've been thinking about this one for a long time. So this outlet here, and you can see he's labeled it HR for home run, um, meaning that this will be a dedicated outlet. So we're gonna take it straight from the panel to this outlet. Um, this is going to feed, at least for now, the air conditioner slash heater. And uh, temporarily, we're just gonna put that through the window here. Um, eventually all of the windows in the entire house except for a couple of the historic ones are going to be replaced with um, basically replica historic ones so all wood um, none of this junk <laughs> so that'll be really nice but um, that will be probably over a decade away so uh, in the meantime we'll put an air conditioner in here that also provides enough heat um, we need to run that off of some pretty intense power so it gets its own wire basically now the next challenge is how in the heck did they wire it? So um, this is what I've been kind of walking by this room every day and just thinking to myself. The wiring didn't come from this, this the attic, obviously, because there's just no way you would have gotten it down there. Um, and it didn't come from the bottom. Um, so in other words, underneath this wall uh, is actually a sister joist, so it's basically three two by eights, I believe is what it is. And all of those are screwed together to make uh, basically a beam that holds this exterior wall. Sagging a little bit, but you know what? If you were trying to hold something up for 127 years, you would sag a little bit too. So character, that's what this is gonna be. Um, but in the meantime, um, we can't drill through that vertically. We could do that horizontally, um, but they didn't do that, and I don't know how we would do that, so um, they didn't do it from there. Okay, so then that leaves two options. It either got wired from this side or from that side. Um, if you go outside and look, and I don't want to go out here too much, but if you go outside and look, um, you can tell there are no wires going in from the outside, which is good. Now, this is a whole nother story. <laughs> we are actually gonna be taking this out. This is one of the things I'm super excited about. Very dangerous. Do not do this ever, ever, ever. Um, one of these wires is dead and one of them is live. Uh, and hopefully in the next few days, they will be gone. So I'm really excited about that, but that was not a good idea for whoever did that. Um, anyways, they obviously didn't wire it from the outside. I wondered if maybe they took the siding off and then um, hook up the wiring, but it doesn't look like that because this is actually some of the oldest siding, I believe, um, just in the way that it was done and, and the way that it looks. So I don't think that's actually what happened. Okay, so <laughs> then that makes me wonder, okay, I've only got one other option, and it seems unlikely as well, but I'm hoping that that's the case. So currently what I'm trying to do, if you can look down there, is I'm trying to take this baseboard off. So it had a little trim piece on top and then the baseboard. First of all, I wanted to be really gentle because I didn't know if that was original or not. Um, some baseboards were very fancy and some baseboards were super basic. Um, and I haven't quite identified in this house what it was. It could be really anything for the time period. <laughs> so um, I think in working on this baseboard today that this is actually a replacement piece. Just looking at the wood, it's lighter uh, and it would have been a little bit darker over time. So that's probably good news because it's not gonna hurt my feelings if I take it off. <laughs> um, and I'm not gonna feel super dishonest for you know having to replace it if I damage it. Um, 
The interesting thing though is that it is uh, very true to what was there. So if you look here, you can see uh, remnants of the old wallpaper um, that all stopped in this location and then remnants of paint that also would have painted onto this. So um, I think that's a good indication that even if it's not original, it is the correct dimensions. Um, now, what I'm trying to do is open it up and hopefully what they did was they ran the electrical wiring through a piece of shiplap that they removed. So if they removed that last piece at the bottom and then run the wiring and then put this piece up, that could make sense and that could explain how they did it. Otherwise, I have no idea how they were able to wire this. Um, the challenge is, of course, the way it was put together, this piece was not the last one put on. So now to get this piece off, I gotta take off that trim and then that piece of the baseboard. And hopefully I don't have to keep working my way around the room. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's gonna take a little bit longer, but in the end, I think it'll be good. Honestly, I would have had to have patched it anyway since I'm putting the wall back here. Um, but yeah, just complicated. So y'all pray that that's how they did it. Um, the reason why I care so much is this ship lap is not decorative, it's actually structural. So um, the way that it is screwed in, there's obviously a stud here, um, there's a stud a few feet over, there's a stud another foot over, um, and what this does is it keeps everything from racking and moving. Um, and that's probably one of the ways that this building has been here for as long as it has. Um, today, the modern way that we build these buildings is basically you just put a sheet of chipboard over the studs that's not providing too terribly much structural stability at all um, and that's why you see you know cracks and, and all that kind of stuff so um, it's totally fine it actually works great from a fire perspective and acoustics and everything else but um, this is structural so you want to avoid putting as many holes in this place as possible um, the good news is as I find stuff like this if I'm gentle enough and thank goodness for my cousins that came and helped a couple of weeks ago uh, I can't thank them enough because now I have a little bit more scrap to work with. Um, I can take some of those pieces and make repairs, for instance, in this wall and then where this door is um, to repair that structurally so that it's all tied back together. Um, so hopefully uh, we won't put too many more holes in the wall. Um, I'm emotionally struggling with that, <laughs> but I know it's all for the right reasons and I've really thought out where these outlets need to go so that we're not um, putting a whole bunch of extra ones in there. I hope I'm making the right choices. I think that's one of the biggest challenges with this house is um, because it's so significant, I just don't want to make flippant choices and I really wanna think about what I do so I don't cause additional damage. Um, anyways, you can see also I need to move some stuff out. I co read a whole bunch of things and I'm proud of my progress. Thank you to my friend Katie that helped me work through that. But um, it still it still needs to be moved to the next room so I can get some work done. But uh, this is quite an improvement for sure. It's actually all of my college papers um, from both schools. And I went to Texas A&M and I went to the University of Colorado. Um, and then all of the uh, binders and things that I've gotten from uh, trade uh, events that I've been to, educational sessions, stuff like that. Um, and a few books and things along the way. So anyways, oh, and some playbills, because you gotta have that. Anyways, you guys uh, have a wonderful rest of your Saturday, and I will talk to you Sunday.